Do you need 16 gigabytes of RAM on your brand new M1 iMac or your M1 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or Mac Mini? Let's find out. Hey guys, Max here, and in this video, we're talking about whether you should get the 8 or 16 gigabyte model of the M1 iMac or any M1 device that you're looking to purchase. So why is this even a question to start? Well, because the M1 chip is an SOC or system on a chip. You may have heard that term if you've watched any Apple events where they've announced these computers. So basically what that means is that the RAM, GPU, CPU, and other components in the system are all part of this one little chip. So it's all a system on a chip architecture in that M1 chip. And that means also that instead of having a dedicated and allocated amount of RAM for every component in the system, the RAM is shared among the entire system. So whatever needs the most RAM gets whatever RAM it needs. So that means that some apps will not get as much RAM as they might need because there are gonna be bigger apps, more intensive apps that are taking up all of the RAM on your computer. But it does not mean that eight gigabytes is all you have on your computer because using the SSD, which has gotten so fast and fast enough and so efficient, that you're able to use what's called swap memory on the M1 chip. What swap memory does is it fills in the gaps where there might not be enough RAM for a certain application, so you don't always get these, your system has run out of application memory warnings, and that just means that it's able to be more efficient and it's able to save as much RAM as possible for those bigger apps and use swap memory for the smaller apps. The RAM basically overflows, so the memory that is not able to fit inside the RAM or inside the RAM allocation anymore just goes into the swap memory, and it's a totally seamless process because of how efficient swap memory has gotten now. So this may all sound great, but there are still some use cases where you might need 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's stuff like for professionals, exporting 8K footage from Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or Premiere Pro, that's when you're gonna notice a considerable amount of slowdown with the eight gigabyte model. One thing about that though, is that these Macs with the M1 chip are not actually Macs that would be traditionally focused at prosumers. They're more consumer level Macs. And so if you're looking at a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, those Macs are not the sorts of things that are built for production or anything like that. They're just consumer Macs. They're not prosumer Macs in any way. However, if you are buying this for professional work, like exporting many, many, many batches of photos from Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One, those are the sorts of use cases where you're going to want to have 16 gigabytes of RAM. People who are going to want the 16 gigabyte model are pretty much just people who are doing very, very large projects. So like editing multiple streams of 4K footage in Final Cut Pro, even that's going to make it slow down a little bit. I'm on the eight gigabyte model and I have not noticed any slowdown editing just two streams of 4K footage. And so I think that probably like three or four streams of 4K footage is probably where it's gonna max out and you're gonna wanna get the 16 gigabyte model. But it's not only prosumers who are gonna want the 16 gigabyte model because if you're hoping that this computer will last you I don't know, five to 10 years into the future, and you're hoping that the computer will last you all the way even past then, then you are definitely going to want to get the 16 gigabyte model just to future proof it because you don't know what software it's gonna be like, software limitations or RAM limitations will be like in these computers, you can't upgrade them. So you need to future proof it. Think about how long you're going to want to keep your computer for. And so if you're only keeping it for maybe a couple of months, maybe a year, just holding out until the computer that you actually want comes out, you sell it, whatever, that's when you'll be fine with eight gigabytes of RAM because right now software is not, you know, using so much RAM that you're gonna be maxing out doing whatever video calls at eight gigabytes or something. Nothing like that is happening right now, but you never know what the future might hold. I've seen people being like, you need to get the 16 gigabyte model. I don't think that's completely true, but there are a couple use cases that you're going to want the 16 gigabyte model. Do I regret getting the eight gigabyte model? No, not at all. I don't know why I would. It's a fantastic computer and I have not noticed any slowdown in the time that I've had it. So I don't think that you will either, but these use cases are the sorts of things that you're going to want to look out for when you are choosing between 16 and eight gigabytes of RAM. The upgrade from eight to 16 is $200 in the US. So that's a pretty good price, but that is something to definitely consider before you buy it because it's a little bit expensive for that upgrade. It's really all up to what you are going to be doing with your computer, but I hope this was helpful nonetheless. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.